December marks the first anniversary of the tragedy at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown where 26 people lost their lives. As we look back on this year, mental health has very much been in the forefront of our minds. I'm Carol Vassar with the Hartford Healthcare Behavioral Health Network. Joining me right now is J. Craig Allen, MD. He is the medical director at Rushford. Dr. Allen, what has changed in the delivery of services uh, in terms of mental health in the state of Connecticut in the past year? And have we made any strides with regard to eliminating stigma? Yeah, I, I think there have been, there has been movement in terms of education for the public and for lay people in regards to being able to identify um, the idea that and, and, ident and understand the fact that mental health problems often begin in youth. Half of all adults afflicted by mental health problems had the onset of their symptoms before the age of 14 and uh, two-thirds of adults with mental health problems uh, had those symptoms present even before the age of 21. This understanding that identifying early signs and symptoms of mental health and getting people to treatment so understanding that there is effective treatment available is something that I think the needle has moved on. Programs like Mental Health First Aid, which is like CPR but for mental health and substance abuse problems, uh, these kinds of programs go out into the community to teach lay people signs and symptoms, uh, when is a referral appropriate, where is help available, what are community-based programs, what are specialized programs, those, those types of programs, Mental Health First Aid, have received increased funding. I think there is a very, very long way to go. Brain-based disorders like mental health problems and substance abuse problems have received a tremendous amount of attention over the last decade or so, and our understanding of the circuitry of the brain and how these brain-based diseases unfold has led us to identifying new medication interventions, other types, types of psychosocial treatment that are very, very effective. But understanding that some of our treatments can be as effective as cutting-edge treatments in other fields like cardiology is something that hasn't quite made its way um, into the general psyche. Uh, and hasn't really even made its way fully into the, the medical field at large. So early intervention really is important. This mental health first aid that you talk about is not aimed at people who are professionals in the field right now, but are, is aimed at the school secretary, the police officer, the parent who might have an interest in perhaps intervening on behalf of their child or a family member. That's right. What else has Hartford HealthCare done with regard to helping to eliminate the stigma? Well, you know, some of the things that Hartford HealthCare has done in the Behavioral Health Network is to hold community-based forums, educational sessions. There, I have the most recent one was done in Glastonbury, and it was an opportunity for people from the community to come out and hear from a panel of experts. So at that at that meeting, there was someone from the local high school. There was someone who'd been afflicted with um, a psychiatric disorder since they were very young. And uh, there was um, a, a specialist there, and there was also a representative of mental health first aid. And the conversation was around what's it like to be someone who has a mental health disorder here in the United States? What's it like to be in the school system? What's it like to be in the community? And uh, it was a very good experience. I think it was well received. We've held other forums like that, and the plan is to continue to do that throughout the next few years. And that's something all of the Hartford Healthcare BHN affiliates, Behavioral Health Network affiliates, are planning for the, the next year or so. Right. Yeah, uh, going back to the, the issue of the tragedy at Sandy Hook, the release of the tapes recently, the 911 tapes, which many people have heard, or in some cases, the TV stations have chosen not to air mm -hmm. these. How does that affect the psyche? And as we approach the first anniversary, are we affected as a community? Are we affected as individuals? Yeah. I think that the release of tapes like, like those 911 tapes have the effect of, uh, you know, un unfortunately, I think sometimes in re-traumatizing people. So they take people right back to when they first heard about it and those horrible thoughts that they had and uh, the fears and the sadness and the grief. And you know, that's, that's the risk of bringing these things out. Not unlike with uh, 911, when on a yearly basis 
the videos come out and everyone goes back to when where they were on 9 11 2001 news, right yeah. and so i think the same the same thing happens when when these kinds of tapes come out you don't have to listen to it and if you're going to listen to it you don't have to have your kids listen to it and you can you can try to you know um, compartmentalize that kind of information because i think it can be quite traumatic and if somebody is in need of assistance professional assistance they can turn to one of the behavioral health network affiliates of hartford Healthcare. that's right well thank you j craig allen for joining us today for the Hartford Healthcare Behavioral Health Network, I'm Carol Vassar. Thanks for joining us.